Hope and possibility. Hope and possibility for a narcissistic personality? What is that? And why there could be hope for the narcissist next. Dr. Gregory Jans is a best-selling author of over 45 books and the founder of the Center A Place of Hope, voted a top 10 center for depression treatment in the U.S. As the pioneer of whole person care, Dr. Jans is known as the messenger of hope. Now the nation's expert on anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationships, trauma, and PTSD, here is Dr. Gregory Jantz. Hi, it's counselor and educator Dr. Greg Jantz, and why are we talking about narcissistic personality disorder? Yes, it is here. We use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders to uh, label, identify, diagnose. And this is an area that is so um, interesting, shall we say. <laughs> Narcissistic. I've had so many requests to speak on what is a narcissist and, and why are there so many out there? And I think I'm living in with one and what do I do? First of all, we're always super, super careful about putting labels, but here's what the diagnostic uh, manual has to say. A person with the NPD, okay, that's the disorder. Here's the list. They will exaggerate their achievements or expect to be recognized as superior without any accomplishments to support it. Exaggerate their achievements. You know somebody maybe like this, where there's a lot of exaggerations, exaggerated sense of self-importance. That kind of fits in here. Number two, preoccupied with fantasies of success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Keyword there preoccupied with fantasies, uh, times of things that really are a bit outlandish. Now, this is just a few of the criteria. Now, remember, I say be careful and go slow before we label somebody, because there's times that somebody can have a few of these and they're not a narcissistic personality disorder. Okay, next one. They believe he or she that they are special and unique and can only be understood uh, or should associate with other special high status individuals. Okay, so it's like I am so special that nobody really can understand me. Now, as a counselor and a person that has been doing this for 39 years, I can tell you there are those individuals that I have seen that do fit this profile. And I see them who've come in for help. And I have seen some individuals create change. Let me just say, this seems to be slow and stubborn as far as creating change. Because we're talking about a personality disorder, which is usually slow to change. My personal belief is there's got to be, again, this is just my vantage point. But uh, intervention, God, divine intervention, something has to change at the core of this person. All right, here's a few others. They have a sense of um, entitlement or unreasonable expectations. They really want to be treated uh, favorable. Uh, they will have this, again, I'm reading the diagnostic criteria. Um, but expect automatic compliance with whatever they're requesting. So uh, they will also require excessive admiration. You cannot, there's always a leak in the bucket. You cannot give them enough positive. There's just positive. It's going to keep running out. They require so much admiration. admiration. Uh, there's a few others, but I want to mention this one here. Um, the lack of empathy and the really true disconnect from a sense of their actions affect people, a really a disconnect from any sort of feelings or uh, understanding or care or compassion for another person. There is a lacking empathy. So these are a few of the characteristics. Now, 
I have had folks tell me, you know what, I have been married uh, to somebody like this, and you've described them perfectly. We still go slow before we slap a label. We don't ever want to do that. We need to look at this and go, okay, what else is going on? This is the whole person approach. Now, a personality disorder is something that seems to be deeply ingrained. We will see traits that emerge early on in a person's life. And you can see two people raised in the same environment. One could develop this narcissistic uh, traits and the other not. So there's not always a good explanation, um, but they will um, emerge and we see behavioral issues growing up and junior high, a little more, more excessive behavioral issues. You'll see that lack of empathy or that lack of caring really emerge early on. So as we look at this, um, you can see a pattern that can develop and then it, as we move into the early uh, adulthood and the early 20s, you're going to see a lot of these characteristics in full bloom uh, and they manifest these characteristics. Now, if you're in a relationship with a true narcissistic personality, um, here's a couple things that you'll experience. And these, these are um, very... Um, common, and I'm sharing this. This comes from the domesticshelters.org, domesticshelters.org, uh, where they're dealing with uh, a lot of how to deal with abusive partners. And I just wanted to highlight two uh, factors that we see. And one is they're going to have a, and I'm reading this directly from their information, have a circular, nonsensical, and seemingly never-ending conversations in order to frustrate their victim to the point where they're more likely to give up. <sighs> circular, nonsensical, nonsensical, seemingly never-ending conversations in order to frustrate, keyword there, frustrate the victim to the point where they're likely to give up. So they have the ability to abuse and manipulate through words, and it is nonstop. You don't stop a person from conversing. They will go on and on and on. And if you say, yeah, I got it, okay, they're not going to stop. Um, they will whittle you down, and and it feels like a destroying the sense of self. And that's why this organization has used the word victim. Again, uh, domesticshelters.org, they also have love bombing a victim. Uh, and here's how that's defined. Showering them with the grand gestures of affection and attention, and then start tearing down their self-esteem later. Um, the victim will crave their original amount of admiration back, and then we have stepped into this dangerous cycle of what uh, they're calling psychological abuse. So how that works is, I'm going to love bomb, I'm going to show you so much admiration, and I'm hooking you strongly. And that admiration feels good. And if you feel needy and, and you're getting a lot of praise and admiration, you feel elevated. You feel, ah, I am so loved. I am so accepted. And you may even develop a sense of, I feel cherished. Well, what happens is now it flips and we begin to um, tear you down and tearing you down with words. And then your self-esteem is, is I call it whittled down. It's just slow, slow emotional bruises on the way down. And then it's hard to put it all back together. Um, and you're going to crave that original amount of attention over and over and over. And then you're given it and you see this pattern that just emerges. So we know that... Um, one of the things, if you're with a narcissistic personality type, 
Uh, and again, I'm going to say there's varying degrees of this. There's varying degrees of uh, personality disorders. There's varying degrees of um, the harshness. There's varying degrees of, of the power of the narcissistic personality disorder. So, but um, one of the things that is so important to look at, again, I'm sharing from domesticshelters.org because they have such good information on this and have helped so many. What I'm looking at is a section here that says listening to your gut and why that's so important. And I'm reiterating this because this is one of the things that we've seen at the center, a place of hope, in that we've seen individuals um, listen to their uh, not listen to their gut and go, I know something's wrong, I know something's wrong, but you get sucked in and you get victimized and re-victimized and re-victimized. And so gradual escalation looks like verbal insults that become more degrading. I'm reading right from their information. Gradual escalation looks like verbal insults becoming more degrading. The abuser's control ramps up. Um, what's that look like? Well, maybe the person's no longer allowed to leave their home, um, threats become more alarming, they're controlling you with uh, shame, with money, with things you can or cannot do, um, with threats. If you're not back home by a certain time, you will regret it. So there's that, that fear component. So the narcissistic personality will use fear to control another person and fear and threat and the diabolical nature of this is i got fear on one side and the threat on one side and on the other side just a minute ago i had admiration i had what i thought was love and so i'm always being being pulled this is why we call it emotional abuse and uh, every direction here's a few things to when you say listening to your gut here's a few things to listen to Nagging, the nagging feeling. Let me just say that. Nagging feeling. Um, persistent thoughts. Um, where you were treated a certain way and you've got to um, do something a certain way and you're worried about doing it a certain way because that narcissistic personality has got their um, tentacles in everything you're doing and you feel like I can't do anything right. And so you have persistent thoughts of failure. Uh, you're going to live with pending doom and anxiety, high, high anxiety levels. Um, and that just becomes normal. There is a, a term I could coin with anxiety that we call anticipatory anxiety. The anticipatory anxiety is the anxiety that is... Um, so intense that we find it controlling everything because you're thinking about the what ifs. What if this happens tomorrow? What if he or she does this back to me? So anticipatory anxiety. Um, you'll find that you're going to be riddled with a lot of self-doubt. You'll have hesitation about making decisions. Uh, you'll always feel suspicious you're going to feel that um, you may find um, not trusting uh, for good reason but then you start to not trust yourself and uh, you may have just a lot of struggles making even the simplest decision now here's one of the things um, they may find you and you may feel stalked and and you have to talk your way out of things is what you feel like you cannot talk your way out of anything uh, with a narcissistic personality uh, and this is sometimes for reasons of even emotional safety that you're going to stop contributing uh, in a conversation you're going to pull back you're going to um, need to understand what you're dealing with um, you don't debate and so as we look at this go okay um, 
I am caught in this web and I can't get out of this. I can't talk my way out of it. Um, and this is where if you're living with this situation, you absolutely uh, have got to find how to get emotional support, how to get uh, support that is um, a strategy and behavioral supports. So there's a lot that we can do, even learning what I'm going to call the skills of DBT, those things I can change and those I can't. And uh, dialectical behavioral therapy can have a real um, effect on how you're going to manage, how you're going to manage emotions, how you are going to be in a very difficult situation and yet let let it not steal your value in the sense of who you are. So there's five, and this is going to be uh, fast and brief, but we usually talk about five types of uh, narcissism and narcissistic behavior. And there's one that's called overt. And this is the person that their big theme is grandiose arrogance and they have a huge sense of self-importance. This is a big one. Um, and oftentimes we'll see this. Sometimes it gets a little confused with sociopathic behavior and being a sociopath uh, is different uh, than a narcissistic, though there can be overlaps. The sociopath has no sense of consciousness about any doing any right or wrong and they have similar traits um, as the narcissist, uh, they may not feel they're so grandiose though. They're going to specialize in manipulation. Whereas the narcissistic personality, they're the ones they believe that I am, I'm superior. I am the, the best at, and I deserve a lot of admiration. Okay. So that's the overt narcissistic personality. Um, okay. You can have overlaps of these, but the overt is, it's so obvious. The key word is arrogant. It's so obvious. They're so arrogant. Um, and again, this is an enduring trait, an enduring trait. And the next one is covert. And this is, again, um, just descriptors to help you understand what's going on. But the covert, um, and we've put a good chart, by the way, out in our uh, social media. We've put some good uh, charts that you can look at. Um, on the topic of narcissistic personality. We've got great charts there on Instagram um, under the center, a place of hope, but defensive and fragile is the covert. They really are fragile. They are so sensitive to criticism and um, it is, um, you see the sensitivity, but they keep trying to amp themselves back up in their importance. Um, this form of narcissistic behavior is a little less than the uh, more overt or the arrogant, but they are ex extremely, the, the covert, extremely fragile. Um, but you'll see all the narcissistic traits in this. Uh, the uh, antagonistic person, this is an individual that I've put here, belittles and exploits others for personal gain. Again, you can have all all these traits, but these are just kind of the five types. And one of these tends to emerge as the primary. So, um, belittle, exploiting people constantly for personal gain. Uh, remember narcissist, it's all about them, all about them. Uh, there's communal, uh, narcissistic behavior, and this is the inflated self view. Um, they believe everybody should like them. Everybody should love them. And they're out there uh, trying to seek uh, that admiration um, because they deserve it. You deserve to love me. I'm so great and I'm so lovable. <laughs> so uh, there is a malignant um, form. And this is the type uh, that really I've put here. They're aggressively malicious and they are indifferent to any sense of values or morality. Um, again, uh, being the malignant form of narcissistic personality, this is 
a flavor of evilness and maliciousness. Their intent, their intent is to hurt and cause harm. So this is just important to understand. Yeah, there's a lot of good information that's available quickly that we all can get on the narcissistic personality disorder. And, and we are seeing this theme kind of come up more and more. And people are uh, wondering more and more about this, <laughs> or if I'm living with one. Um, if you are a narcissist, you probably are not searching for information on it because there's nothing wrong with you. You're great and you, you don't see it. These are sincere. I say sincere, but these are blind spots. These are flaws in the personality that uh, are relatively chronic and embedded in a person's uh, personality. So they do not see the same things you see. They believe the lie. So this is just a couple thoughts as we look at uh, narcissistic traits and uh, how to spot these with individuals. I, I want to mention that again, uh, you'll you'll find yeah there's five types and then there's others that say well there's nine types look what we're looking for is patterns and patterns of ingrained behavior over time and they are usually the last one to ever seek help uh, if it gets complicated with co-occurring uh, disorder of like addiction um, this can amplify every symptom uh, that you're experiencing. If they think they're super special and grandiose and deserve a lot of admiration and they start drinking, that's going to magnify. <laughs> so um, we do see in a certain number of, and it's hard to say exactly in, in our experience, it has been there uh, where, where there's co, we call it co-occurring or co-addictive uh, in the uh, whole personality disorder. Now, there are some people that go through a season of life and their development and maturing where they actually see, uh, you see these traits and they're, you see the traits, but you do see that they emerge and you start to see as they grow and mature, a lot of things I'm talking about kind of move, move away, they move away from, and you start to see, um, some good qualities. So, it could be said that like some teenagers seem so narcissistic, they're so self-absorbed uh, and they have all the answers. And that being said, um, that's a season for most. And we grow and mature and we go through that season and you go, wow, my teenager <laughs> turned out is a pretty great adult. Um, and, and they came through it. We're talking about hard, enduring traits here that are really prevalent over time. So, okay, I want you just to remember this last <clears throat> uh, couple minutes here that we're looking at the overt. I want to just review that overt narciss narcissism one more time because this is the most common. And my list is they're, they tend to be very outgoing, arrogant, entitled, overbearing, um, really exaggerated sense of self. Um, they can look competitive. They're most likely very uh, low on empathy and you cannot give them enough praise or admiration. That's the covert. That's the most common that you're going to see. And that is also the person that in most cases is the slowest to ever a change. And we're talking about without a miracle, we're talking about a person that uh, has got to really acknowledge I need to change and they have to really be willing to begin to open up a different worldview where they begin to s receive feedback in order to change. And this is very difficult. I just want to say that it's very difficult. Uh, it's not, it's not done in a short period of time. It's done over time. I do believe it's the position that I come from, from uh, my faith perspective. I do believe that people can and do change. And I have seen situations that I didn't think would 
and our humanness would ever be any different. And I've seen situations where people have changed and much later it's like so dramatic. So a couple thoughts as we conclude just this topic of narcissistic personality disorder. If you're really truly with somebody that's showing these things, um, you've got to have a strategy to preserve your well-being. And this is where you've got to be working with somebody. You've got to learn the skills of DBT. There's one called radical acceptance. There's another one that deals with just dis emotion distress. And we've got to learn new skills in order to maintain our own well-being. And also in my case, I'm going to pray for protection. I'm going to pray for emotional healing and stability for myself uh, because the narcissistic personality is all about controlling and degrading. And at times we lose touch with what is true and what is true about who I believe God created us to be. All right. There is hope. And let's take care of ourselves, put ourselves in a position so that we can deal with this. Seeing it, what it really is, is the first step. And I believe that we can, it's difficult, but we can insulate ourselves from further effects that destroy our sense of self. Tough topic. Some of the topics we talk about are very uh, slow to change. And this is one of those that is, in my experience and our experience the last 39 years is really um, slow to change. Um, so we just got to say that we're going to deal with reality and we're going to deal with, you know what, from my vantage point, God's truths prevail and a person can come to a new revelation about who they were really designed to be.